webmasters and welcome to part two of creating a private messaging system for your PHP and MySQL based community or social network websites. When we last left off in part one we had created the form and the MySQL database table that's going to hold all the private messages. Right now we press submit nothing happens and that's because we haven't actually put in the JavaScript function that this form is connected to and that function will be connected to jQuery's Ajax mechanisms to easily allow sending and transmitting PHP and MySQL data within the page without refreshing the page. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, let's quickly discuss what happens in this JavaScript function that I just placed in here. You'll see that it says end private messaging stuff and start private messaging stuff. So between those two commented lines there is all the JavaScript that I just added to the JavaScript area of the profile.php page. So let's discuss it real quick. So function send PM fires off whenever somebody presses the submit button. And here the first thing we're doing up top is when the PM form submit button is pressed the function fires off to disable it. That's what's happening here. And we're doing that just to disable the submit button so there's less of a chance of double posting and things like that. But in our, in our parsing mechanism in the PHP side of things we're going to be checking to make sure there's no double posting happening. So within this JavaScript function what happens is these variables are created from the form hidden variables. The, the hidden input that are within that form they're all going to be accessed and they're going to be thrown into variables. So the PM subject, the text area which is the message, the sender name, the sender ID, the recipient name, the recipient ID and the PM whippet. Those are all going to be put into local JavaScript variables so then we can just use those variables more easily when we need to. And here we set the URL. This is the script in the scripts for profile folder called private message parse.php and this is going to handle taking in new private messages and it's also going to handle parsing reply messages. This one script will handle it all. So we refer to that URL right here. Now the first thing we do before we access jQuery's Ajax mechanisms for sending and receiving data without page refresh we have to make sure that they filled in the subject and the message. If not we're going to give them an error message that says please type in a subject or please type in your message and we'll give them the nice little round error icon which I'll show you right now. Let's see if I let me refresh this page and show you. Right now I'm at Tech Spectrum's profile I'm going to press message it opens up the private messaging form and if I just press submit without putting in a subject or a message you see what happens it says please type a subject nice big red X and then it goes away using jQuery now say I type a subject and I leave out the message please type in your message nice big red X that's what you want you want to no notify the user that they have to do something further to process the form and that's all that's doing so those if and else if condition statements right there handle that. Now if those two make it by and they have put in a subject and they have put in a message we do this else condition here which will be the area where we access jQuery's Ajax mechanism for sending and receiving data. And now I'm going to apply that code and explain it pretty good and in depth for you. But this will probably be the last time that I go into depth about jQuery's Ajax mechanisms and form sending using jQuery and Ajax. So if you're somebody who really wants to grasp it I would recommend really paying attention to this lesson. So let's go ahead and pop that code in and explain it really quick and keep in mind that I have not tested this yet. There might be some little tiny thing that prevents it from working but before I even finish the video and put it up on YouTube and release any source code it'll all be working perfectly. Alrighty, so you see here is the code that I just popped into place. And this is the code that actually posts using jQuery. We have the URL as the first argument there and then comma will separate the URL from the variables. And you can see all of the variables are within curly brace here and the closing curly brace is right there and all the variables that are going to be sent to that PHP script from this form 
are going to be assembled right here. So you can see subject, which in the PHP script will pick up as post subject. This one will pick up, this variable will pick up as post message. So we just take the PM subject dot value, and we make that equal the subject variable. We take the PM, all of these variables here are laid in right here and they correspond to posted variables that are going to the PHP script. So the PHP script is going to be picking up subject, message, sender name, sender ID, recipient name, recipient ID, this whip it, and that's it. So those variables are going to be what's sent to the PHP file. On return of the data, when PHP gets all done with it, playing with it, MySQL, all happens within a split second, function will run. And within function, there's, what, four lines here? The first one slides up the whole message form using jQuery. The second line throws into the interaction results div, which is this guy down here. Interaction results is sitting right above the form, and it's a hidden div that only appears when you need it to. That's where we're showing that red X and giving the error messages. And the data, you see right here, up here we're using HTML and putting raw HTML right into that argument right there. But here we're using the data that's coming back from the PHP script. So in the PHP script is where you actually assemble the HTML data that's going to be showed when the message is successfully sent. Or if there's an error that PHP script happens to pick up, it'll show it here. The last two lines simply clear out the message subject area and the, the text area for the message and the input for the subject line. It clears that out so what they typed in previously is not still sitting there if the message successfully was sent. And that's how it works. So what we're going to do is now assemble this private message parse.php script which I'm already working on here and then I'm going to test it out and see if when I send a message to another member on the site it actually goes into the database and all of the appropriate variables were laid into the database once I see that's working, then I can make the inbox for each user, the sent box, and the reply form, and then we're done. Okay, here's the private message parse.php, which, as we noticed in the JavaScript, is the URL that this function is set to send data to. So, first thing to do is start session. Then, we're going to do error handling and low-level security checks, which is all of this right all through here until we get to parse the message so you can see there's a good bit of error handling and low-level security checks going on here and all you have to do is when you go and download the source files or you can put this on HD full screen on YouTube and just read it all you can see what it says above the code there's nice code comments that I took the time and wrote in there for you that will help you understand what each little segment of code is doing here Okay, I'm not going to sit here and explain it again when I already wrote out nice code comments for you guys. This prevents double posts by checking the database to see if this sender has sent any messages within the last 20 seconds. So basically, this prevent double post is checking to see within 20 seconds if they have already sent a message. We don't want to let them send again. We want to make users wait 20 seconds between all private message sending. And this one is preventing more than 30 private messages in one day from this member because each member according to their ID can only post 30 messages a day. Now finally when you get done with your error handling and checking to make sure everything is the way it should be before we parse a message and I might change this code up a little bit if it's not actually tight and secure enough there's a little leak in it where somebody can get some spam through or impersonate somebody else's account something like that will definitely go in and fix the code and make sure that in the next release of Web Intersect that that problem is alleviated. Now in the parse the message section this I don't know what the hell that's doing there we don't need that. But here we pretty much assuming everything is cool now and now we're just gonna do some filtering on those variables when they come in. We're posting we're gathering the posted values from the form and putting them into local PHP variables here then we can check to see if any of them are empty. If they do, we exit the script and we give that nice round X meaning error and we say missing data to continue. That's what they'll see in that interaction 
results container back in the profile.php page if any of these variables happen to be empty. So in the subject and the message, what we're doing here, you'll notice we're running HTML special charge function, which is a PHP function, for changing tags and things. So if somebody puts in, let's say somebody puts in this for instance, opening tag, script, and then let's close the opening tag. What will happen is HTML special chars will convert this tag to an HTML equivalent that will look something like, uh, I don't know, they usually look like right there. And LT and and GT. See, that's the opening and closing bracket. And that's what HTML special chars will convert these brackets to so they won't actually process. That's what we want. And we also do that to the message and the subject line both. Now if happen anything happens to be left that is malicious characters and it's not converted by HTML special chars, we're running MySQL real escape string here just to be safe. So that's how the, all that code works. So after those are converted, we're checking to see if anything's empty or not, and if it is, we have to give them an error message and shut down the processing of this because we need every single variable. So if all of the variables are there, this else comes into play and this code runs. We're going to delete all the messages that are over 100. Now this part is a little important because you might not want to have a system that allows each member to sit there and archive 5,000, 10,000, or a million messages within their inbox. When I'm making my system to where they can only archive 100, if they're not on top of it more than that, I don't even want them to be using my private messaging system. When I use a private message, like for instance the one at developphp.com, I keep my inbox nice and clean. I keep my outbox nice and clean. That's because I'm just an organized kind of person. You're going to have a lot of people on your site that really don't care. They're not very organized. And they'll let their inbox swell up to 10,000, 100,000, however many. They don't even care. So you can set that limit here using these numbers. So if the delete comment increment value and I named that DCI because that's the delete comment increment value reaches more than 99 we're gonna cut delete them all from the, the database this is gonna cut all except 99 of those off the tail end so their newest messages are still in the box but their old tail end messages in their list are gonna get wiped out that's how that works so after you clean up delete the messages that are over 100 or however many you wanna let them archive then we insert the data. So we insert into private messages the fields to ID, from ID, time sent, subject, and message with these values that we just gathered up. The to, the from, now we post in for the time sent field, subject, and the message variable. It all gets laid into the database right there. Now we run a little check to see if the MySQL query actually was performed correctly, and if not, we give them error message saying could not send message and insertion query error has occurred with that nice red X and we exit the script else we're going to email them so everything's inserted into the database if there was no insertion query error and we're going to email the people here and I have mine commented out because at web intersect I'm not going to run the emailing alert thing because mine is like a sandbox testing site for the actual software that people can download and I think a lot of people are going to be testing things out and I don't want all these emails using up all my SMTP limits that I have on my server so just understand that this script works when you uncomment this it's going to send an email alert to the person who is receiving that private message telling them hey you have a new private message at our site you might want to come and check it out and you throw in the message subject and you tell them this is an automated message to let you know that the from name variable just sent you a private message and I'm going to change this code up a little bit to make it a little more dynamic for all people's websites and then I'm gonna release it into the version 1.33 but now that we have the parsing mechanism all set up so you can see after you email them you wanna show the success message little round icon that PNG image with the check mark 
means success and it's all it means success and it's all green and we want to say message sent successfully so that's what happens so basically let's summarize the script at the top you start session do error handling make sure everything is right for sending then you parse the message if everything is cool then right when the insertion query runs you want to email them after the email runs then you want to give them the image success round success png and all of this is going to happen in milliseconds i mean sometimes if your server is kind of choking it might take one to two seconds for all of this to process and that's why we're going to put in the profile.php page that little cool graphic that we have for showing people that there's an Ajax function happening that the server is making calls behind the scenes just just like Facebook puts that cool little like loader animation that's what we're gonna have in place so let's see we have the JavaScript function for sending to the PHP file we have the PHP file all ready to go now I'm gonna go and make a test and see if this actually inserts data into my database when I send the private message to somebody else at this point they won't be able to reply yet because we haven't made the inbox or the reply form okay now with the new files FTP'd I'm going to send the message or test it anyways I'm going to say hi subject and the message body will say testing PM system and submit message sent successfully nice big green arrow letting me know everything is cool now let's go check MySQL in PHP my admin and as you can see the latest message that I just sent look at I just I just put the script up to make this work and somebody already sent me a message a private message so this should let you guys know at develop PHP how much I actually get private messages there at develop PHP it's insane I can't even check them anymore but you can see here's testing PM system subject high and I just sent that a few seconds ago to member 626 which is tech spectrum and from ID 1 which is me and whoever 451 is is the person who just sent me a private message okay so you see the private messaging works just fine on the initial sending so basically all we need now is the reply form that's going to be embedded into the inbox so all we need is the inbox and the sent box reply form is going to be embedded into the inbox in every single message there'll be a reply button at the bottom of it when they hit that reply button we're going to have jQuery pop up a new window that is the reply form and uh, just to let some of you guys know that are paying close attention on the PM form here I changed this from session ID X to regular session ID that way in private message parse I didn't have to break down that that variable but if you want to and make it a little more secure you can break down that session ID X variable that's encrypted which both are really encrypted but the ID X the session ID X variable is double encrypted okay the parsing mechanism is really it's already finished for the reply messaging also and this little this little extra piece is a little preemptive action for anybody who might comment in and say oh Adam you should really give a little loader symbol when the Ajax function is snapping off to let people know that servers make a call with a little loader animation alright yeah I'll put that in right here because I know you guys are gonna beef at me about not putting it in beforehand so I'm catching y'all before you have a chance to snap at me about it alright here we got uh, images loading dot gif it's in a hidden span that's ID of PM form processor gif so let's go into the JavaScript and right here PM form processor process gif dot show right when all the variables are set and we're gonna send to the PHP script we're gonna show that little animation when it gets back and everything's done we're gonna hide it HIDE that should do it and I'll show you what that did okay I've FTP'd the adjusted file and I'm gonna send a message now we're gonna look right down here and watch out for that little loader to show up when we press submit see it and it only took a split second 
But if your server is choking or it takes in any amount of time that's longer than a second or so, you want to have that loader there just in case, just to let people, people know that something's processing. Okay, we'll see you in part three where we're going to quickly add the inbox, the sent box, and also build the reply form into the inbox, which is all going to be very simple, and that video is going to go pretty quick, actually.